This is going to be a follow-up to the original Rockus in film study that I put out uh, before the NFL draft and then reposted on Twitter and on YouTube uh, now that the assignment is official with the Ravens. Three elements that I want to cover or talk about briefly. I'd like to keep this eight or ten minutes. Only picked eight plays. Rocky Asin is physical. He's committed to playing physical, whether it's downfield, staying connected to receivers, making tackles like you see uh, here against the Jaguars in 2022. He's just a physical guy. I think he fits in well with the Ravens' uh, style of play, with the the division, the AFC North, the types of receivers that we're going to play against. <clears throat> Whether we bring back Marcus Peters or not, which it certainly looks like we're not now, this seems to be a guy who fits in the same mold in terms of that competitiveness, in terms of how he attacks wide receivers in certain situations, whether it's slamming them on their head like you just saw, um, a, a stay in tight coverage, being somewhat physical downfield, or just being totally committed to being involved in a play uh, no matter where it happens. This is 2021 film, him with the Colts. And you can see you got Cooper Cup in motion coming at him. There's a lot of receivers who would, um, or DBs, safeties, linebackers, who would go with that eye candy, meaning they would let that motion uh, from one side of the field to the other, kind of pull them out and widen them up. But Rocky Sin, if you ask me, is disciplined. Eye disciplined, uh, functional discipline in terms of um, com being committed to where he's supposed to go. Because you watch, once the ball is snapped, he isn't seeing this motion at all. He's just seeing his man Robert Woods go away. He's gone. <clears throat> he's already committed now to going going away. You know, is is even if he's not there, is the other two defenders, the inside out pursuing linebacker and this DB who's defeating the block, you know, are they going to be able to contain Robert Woods? Certainly. But clearly having a third player there, Rakia Sin, who originated from somewhere over this area over here, pre-snap, I think is pretty unbelievable. Just tells you how committed he is to whatever his assignment is. In this case, man on Robert Woods, not being distracted by the motion of cup running at him and this is the middle of this is in the midst of cups you know historic season i think 147 catches so he drew a lot of attention in this case it's man yasin stays with his man robert woods even though you know post snap it looks like uh his man's running away from him okay <clears throat> gonna let this one run two or three times yeah somebody commented in an earlier video and i did use you know a couple of these plays before that this is you know a late hit you know well whatever might be a late hit all i know is he's physical he's committed to being physical uh, he's clearly trying to sell that he didn't mean to hurt or wasn't trying to hurt the quarterback there. But uh, I love the way he plays the game. And I think that kind of came through if you watched my original film study of him that I, like I said, reposted on YouTube, reposted on Twitter last night after you know hearing about the signing being official. I like it. Personally, would I like for Marcus Peters to have been back? Yes. I still would like for that to happen, but it seems like it's you know inevitably not going to. But this, to me, Looks like a guy who's going to play with the Raven style, can play man to man. And, you know, I'm showing you elements of him being physical here, hitting the quarterback, running across the field to track down Robert Woods on a reverse, slamming the receiver on his head. And now you got another example of him being physical. He's communicating with the safety pre snap. Look, I'm not going to name names, but there's some guys coverage wise with this Raiders defense last year that just were not good and were not consistent. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Rocky Sin was not one of them. I don't know what his you know ratings were and how many yards he allowed and all that. I just know from the the plays that I watch, you know he's solid. He's in the right position. He's capable of making tackles like you see. But we're talking about a corner in 2023 in the NFL. So you got to be able to cover. You can tackle all you want, but if you can't cover, there's really not much we can do with you. Well, he can. You know, so we'll look at some examples of man to man. Him just staying stuck to the receiver. Whether he's targeted or not, they're actually targeting uh, Jonathan Abram, who's since been released by uh, the Raiders, obviously, on a little wheel route, I think, out of the backfield. Stays close to the receiver, likes to be physical in man. I think that there is times in quarters, split field coverages, where maybe there's a little bit too much room for the receiver. The receiver kind of has a two-way go. Kind of reminds me of uh, Caillou, Caillou Blue Kelly. A little bit, something I said in a video the other night about him, where when the receiver has a two-way go in split field coverages, if he's left, you know, man-to-man -man solo, there's some opportunity for smaller, quicker receivers to take advantage of him. But similar to Caillou Kelly, when he's playing here, I really like what I see out of Rocky Sin.
when he can get hands on the smaller receivers, you know, whether it's a running back, receiver, slot, whatever. You know, I like what I see. I think it's a very astute signing by the Ravens, worth up to, I think, $6 million, apparently. Not sure what the, the cap hit is for real. Uh, 2021 saw a lot more of this than you did in 2022. Him kind of like just swaying right to left in his press. I've seen this before. You know, I've actually know a couple guys have coached it. Swaying right to left and, you know, pre snap, trying to get his uh, momentum, being able to adjust to the, to the receiver no matter which way he releases, uh, back and forth. And staying tight close to Robert Woods, who, you know, of course, suffered an ACL injury at some point and is now with his second team since uh, being with the Rams. But pretty good coverage. 2021 version of Robert Woods was a guy who made some plays. Uh, Dale Field uh, had an impact in that Super Bowl run, clearly. And uh, I think, you know, before the ACL injury, and I think Rock Sin shows shows good here playing with uh, correct inside leverage as, as a slot defender and not letting Robert Woods uh, get himself upfield. Finally, Playing in zone, um, limited examples, and I did show this play before. Ends up being incomplete, but let's get back to the beginning. Here's Rocky Sin doing his same little sway, lined up, I think, over Cooper Cup, and he's going to back off in zone. And I just love his awareness. You saw him glance briefly. He tried. He glanced outside of him as he sees the quarterback's eyes is looking in his directions. So he let. Cup release inside. He knows there's a, a two other receivers. So there's the a real, very strong possibility that he's going to be targeted here. He's just looking at the quarterback, staying square. Look how square his shoulders are, parallel to, you know, the yard lines. The yard line there, terrible line I just drew, but, you know, one shoulder pointed to that sideline, one shoulder pointed to this line sideline. Why? So he can react in either direction. So he's not overcommitted. His hips aren't opened up, which closes him off to the opposite side. Stays in the window, doesn't give Stafford anywhere to throw the ball. Gives the D-line, which I think is Buckner, I believe, time to get there and make the hit. 2021 film, like I said, even in 2022, I didn't see a ton of slot zone reps from him. But I do think it's very interesting, and I would like to mention this here at the end. The Ravens drafted Kelly from Stanford. Played a lot of left outside corner. Had some reps at right outside corner in 2021 against Drake London. If you didn't watch my video or don't follow me on Twitter, um, you might want to go ahead and do that and see some of his reps. I'm going to talk for a moment while I let these plays run again. Rocky Sin and Caillou Blue Kelly both had some reps in the slot where they looked comfortable. Pepe Williams can play in the slot. He's a hybrid slot corner safety. I don't think Pepe Williams is an outside corner. Brandon Stevens played a lot of outside corner last year, has experience playing safety. Geno Stone played a lot of too high safety last year. Kyle Hamilton can play too high safety. He can play middle of the field free safety. He can play nickel corner, you know, nickel safety, whatever you want to call it. Why am I bringing all those names up? There seems to be a tremendous amount of versatility being built into this DB group. And Maybe every NFL team is like that, but I don't believe so. Uh, Rockison is an outside corner. Make no bones about it. Having said that, I've shown you two plays here of him being in the slot, playing it quite well, including the last play where he zones off against Matthew Stafford and the Rams in 2021. Has good um, balance, has good leverage on receivers, understands the threats that are there. Caillou Blue Kelly's another one. His slot reps against UCLA in 2022 looked pretty good. Pepe Williams, I thought, played an underrated game against the Cincinnati Bengals in week five of 2022 in the Ravens' home win. I thought he did an excellent job being that hybrid corner safety. You guys let me know what you think. I do believe Rocky Sin is you know, going to be a starting left corner for the Ravens in 2022. That's certainly what it seems like to me. Having said that, there's even some film of him lining up at corner and rolling to half field safety. I think Mike McDonald and the defensive back DB coaches and the entire defensive staff have are going to benefit from the, the wide array of talent that the Ravens front office has brought in. Is it possible that there's another veteran signing? I mean, Marcus Peters, how does Marcus Peters fit in with all of those names? I'm just not sure that Rocky Sin and Marcus Peters both sign with the Ravens. You know, knowing that the other one has signed. 
if you could do some kind of like behind the curtain scenario where Rocky Sin or excuse me, Marcus Peters didn't know that Rocky Sin signed, maybe he would sign or vice versa. But that's not the way it works in the NFL. You can't over recruit like you can in college football or like you re- any college sport, really, or like you used to be able to 15, 20, 30 years ago when the recruiting information because of the act, lack of the Internet, lack of social media, obviously, was totally different. It was all word of mouth, phone calls and letters that you received, you know, at your high school, typically, and sometimes at your home. Point is, Marcus Peters might be out, but the Ravens still have a very deep and versatile group of DBs who play physical and are very smart and and capable of adjusting from play to play, from one coverage to the other. I think Rocky Sin just fits into that group um, expertly. You guys let me know what you think. Only showed you eight plays here, looped them back around to make my final point about how versatile I think this group can be and how many options I think it gives the defensive coordinator and the defensive staff for the Ravens You know, in what's going to be a hell of a tough division, the AFC North once again. Appreciate you guys' time. If you enjoy the video and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. We're nearing 10,000 subscribers, which is awesome, and I feel very humbled by that. Um, And if you really enjoyed this video, please consider sharing a link to it on social media to help the video get more reach.